Hi everybody, welcome to another story time with Sid. It is me, Sydney of Hightower, like it is every week. I need to work on this intro. Um, but hi guys. I hope you guys are excited for another story, because I certainly am, because this one is interesting. Okay, so also I just wanted to make a point. I'm getting to the shorter stories in these books, and I love them because they're short and sweet, but they're definitely not as, you know, I don't know if you call the other one epics, but they're not, they're not as, um, they're not as involved. They're very short and sweet, and I love them just as much, so I hope you do too. If you do, let me know. If you don't, meh. Okay, great. I'm going to start reading this week's story, which is The Old House. Him. On the street stood an old house. It was almost 300 years old. You could read this for yourself on the beam where the year had been carved along with the tulips and hop vines. An entire verse was spelled out like in the old days. And in the beam above each window a grimacing face had been carved. The second story jutted far out over the first, and right under the eaves was a leaden drain pipe with a dragon head. The rainwater was supposed to run out of its mouth, but it ran out of its stomach instead because there was a hole in the pipe. All the other houses on the street were so new and so nice, with big window panes, smooth walls. It was easy to say that they wanted nothing to do with the old house. They were probably thinking, how long is that eyesore going to stand there on the street looking ridiculous? The bay window sticks out so far that we can't see from our windows what's happening over there. The staircase is as wide as a castle's and as steep as a church tower's. The iron ra railing looks like the entrance to an old tomb, and it even has brass knobs. How tasteless! Right across the street stood nice new houses, and they thought the same as all the rest. But at a window sat a little boy with fresh red cheeks and bright shining eyes, and he liked the old house best of all, both in the sunshine and in the moonlight. If he looked across the wall where the plants plastered worn off, he could sit there and see the most wondrous pictures, imagining exactly how the street had looked in the past, with the stairs and the bay windows and the peaked gables. He could see soldiers with halberds and roof eaves that ended in dragons and serpents. That certainly was a house worth looking at. And in it lived an old man who wore thick woolen trousers, a dress coat with big brass buttons, and a wig that you could tell was a real wig. Every morning, an old servant would come to clean for him and run errands. Otherwise, the old man in the thick woolen trousers was all alone in the old house. Occasionally, he would come over to the window and look out, and the little boy would nod to him, and the old man would nod back. In that way, they became acquaintances, and then they were friends, although they had never spoken to each other. But that didn't really matter. The little boy heard his parents say, The old man over there lives quite comfortably, but he's so terribly lonely. The following Sunday, the little boy wrapped something in a piece of paper and went down to the gate. And when the servant who ran errands came past, he said to him, Listen here, would you take this for me to the old man across the street? I have two tin soldiers, and this is one of them. It's for him, because I know he's so terribly lonely. The old servant looked quite amused, nodded, and carried the tin soldier over to the old house. Later, a message arrived asking whether the little boy might like to come over for a visit. His parents gave him permission, and so he went over to the old house. The brass knobs in the stairway railing gleamed much brighter than usual. You would think they had been polished in honor of his visit. And it looked like the carved trumpeters, for there were trumpeters carved to the door, standing amid the tulips, were blowing with all their might. Their cheeks looked much plumper than they had before, and oh yes, they blew. Do ta da! The little boy is coming! Do ta da! And then the door opened. The entire hallway was lined with old portraits, knights in armor, and ladies in silk gowns. And the armor clattered and the silk gowns rustled. There was a stairway that led upward for a long way, and downward for a short way, and then came out to a balcony that certainly was quite rickety, with big holes and long cracks in it. The grass and leaves were growing all, out of all of them. The whole balcony outside, the yard and outer wall, was covered in so much greenery that it looked like a garden, though it was only a balcony. Here stood old flower pots with faces and donkey ears. The flowers now grew as if they were wild. 
one pot was completely overflowing with carnations, or rather with green stalks. Shoot upon shoot, it, quite clearly it said. The air has caressed me, the sun has kissed me, and promised me little flower on Sunday, a little flower on Sunday. Then they entered a room where the walls were covered with pigskin and printed with golden blossoms. Gilding wears thin, but never pigskin, said the walls. And there stood leather chairs with very high backs carved all over, and with arms on either side. Sit down, sit down, they said. Oh, how I creak. I'm probably going to get rheumatism just like the old cupboard. Rheumatism in my back. Oh. And so the little boy stepped inside the parlor, which was, there was the bay window. And that, where the old, that was where the old man was sitting. Thank you for the tin soldier, my little friend, said the old man. And thank you for coming to see me. Thanks, thanks, or creak, creak, said all the pieces of furniture. There were so many of them that they practically fell over each other trying to see the little boy. In the middle of the wall hung a painting of a lovely lady, so young, so happy, but dressed in a fashion from olden days with powder in her hair and clothes that looked, stood out stiffly. She said neither thanks nor creaked, but gazed with her gentle eyes at the little boy, who asked the old man at once, where did you get her from? From the junk dealer around the corner, said the old man. He has so many portraits. No one knows those people or cares about them because they've all gone to their graves. But in the old days, I knew her, and now she's been dead and gone for fifty years. Under the painting behind the glass hung a bouquet of withered flowers. They too must have been fifty years old. That's how old they looked. And the pendulum on the big clock swung back and forth, and the hands moved, and everything in the parlor grew even older. But they didn't notice. Back home they say you're so terribly lonely, said the little boy. Oh, said the old man. Old memories and all they bring with them come to visit me. And now you come too. I'm doing just fine. And then he took from the shelf a book with pictures in it. There were long processions and the most wondrous carriages that you don't see anymore today. Soldiers like the Jack of Clubs and tradesmen with fluttering banners. On the tailor's banner, there were scissors held by two lions, and on the shoemaker's, instead of a boot, there was an eagle with two heads, because the shoemakers always have to be able to say about everything, it's a pair. Oh yes, it was quite the picture book. The old man went into the other room to get jam and apples and nuts. Things certainly were blissful in the old house. I can't bear it! said the tin soldier, who was standing on top of the chest of drawers. It's so lonely here and so sad! No. When you've been a part of a family, you can't get used to this. I can't bear it. The days are long, and the evenings are even longer. It's not at all the same over here it was at your house, where your father and mother talk so pleasantly, and where you and all the other sweet children make such lovely commotion. Oh, how lonely it is over here with the old man. Do you think anyone gives him kisses? Do you think anyone gives him gentle looks or Christmas trees? He'll get nothing but a funeral. I can't bear it. You mustn't be so sad about it, said the little boy. I think it's quite lovely, all the old memories, and all they bring with them when they come to visit. Well, I can see them, and I don't know them, said the tin soldier. I can't bear it. You must, said the little boy. And the old man appeared with the most pleased expression on his face, the loveliest jam, apples, and nuts, and the little boy thought no more about the tin soldier. Happy and pleased, the little boy went back home. Days passed and weeks passed, and nods were given to the old house and received from the old house, and the little boy went back there again. And the carved trumpeters blew, do ta da here's the little boy, do ta da And the swords and armor and the knight's paintings clattered, and the silk gowns rustled. The pigskin spoke, and the old chairs had rheumatism in their backs. Ow! It was exactly like the first time, because over there, a day or an hour is just like any other. I can't bear it, said the tin soldier. I've been weeping tin. It's much too sad over here. I'd rather go to war and lose my arms and legs. At least that would be a change. I can't bear it. Now I know what it means to have a visit from your old memories and all they bring with them. I've had visits from mine, and I can tell you that the long run there's no pleasure in it. Finally, I was just about to jump off the chest of drawers. I saw all of you over at your house quite clearly as if you were actually here. It was once again that Sunday morning, as you all well remember. 
All of you children were standing in front of the table singing your hymns the way you sing them every morning. You stood there, so devoutly with folded hands, and father and mother were just as solemn. Then the door opened, and your little sister Maria, who's not yet two, and who always dances when she hears music or song, no matter what kind was brought in. She shouldn't have done it, but she began to dance. She couldn't find the rhythm because the tempo was so slow. She stood first on one leg and bowed her head all the way down, then on the other leg and bowed her head all the way down. But it didn't quite work. The rest of you stood there, looking very serious, all of you, although it must have been hard. But I was laughing inside, and that's why I fell off the table and got a dent that I still have today. But it wasn't proper for me to laugh. But the whole scene has now replayed inside me and everything else that I've experienced. Those must be the old memories and all they bring with them. Tell me, do you still sing on Sunday? Tell me something about little Maria. And how is my friend, the other tin soldier? Oh, he must be happy. I can't bear it. But I gave you away, said the little boy. You have to stay here. Can't you understand that? And the old man brought out a drawer that held many things to look at. A tin can coin holder and a metal perfume box. And old playing cards, big and gilded, the kind that you never see anymore. And more drawers were opened. The piano was open, too. It had a landscape painted inside the lid. It was quite hoarse when the old man played it, but he hummed a tune. Oh, how I wish she could sing that song, he said. Then he nodded at the portrait that he had bought from the junk shop, and the old man's eyes shone so bright. I want to go to war! I want to go to war! shouted the tin soldier as loud as he could, and he plummeted right down to the floor. Well, where did he go? The old man looked, the tiny boy looked, and he was gone. He was gone, and he stayed. I'm sure I'll find him, said the old man, but he never did. The floor was much too open and full of holes. The tin soldier had fallen through a crack, and that's where he lay, as if it were an open grave. The day was over, and the little boy went home. That week passed, and more weeks passed. The windows were quite frozen. The little boy had gone to sit and breathe on them to make a peephole to see the old house, and over there the snow had drifted into all the curlicues and inscriptions. It covered the whole stairway as if no one was home. In fact, no one was home. The old man was dead. In the evening, a hearse stood outside, and into it they placed him lying in a coffin. He was going to rest in his grave out in the country, and that's where they drove him now. But no one accompanied him since all his friends were dead and the little boy blew kisses after the coffin as it drove away. Several days later, there was an auction at the old house, and the little boy saw from his window what was being carried off. The old knights, the old ladies, the flower pots, the long ears, the old chairs, and the old cupboards. One item went to one place, another somewhere else. The portrait of the woman that was found at the junk shop went back to the junk shop, and that's where it stayed, because no one knew her anymore. No one cared about that old painting. In the spring, they tore the house down because it was nothing but an eyesore, people said. You could look from the street right into the parlor at the pigskin wall covering, which was ripped and torn. And the greenery on the balcony was draped widely around the toppled timbers. And then it was all cleared away. That's better, said the neighboring houses. And a lovely house was built with big windows and smooth white walls, but in front, on the spot where the old house had actually stood, a little garden was planted, and up along the neighbor's walls grew wild vines. In front of the garden was placed a big iron fence with an iron gate. It looked so elegant that people stopped to peer inside, and the sparrows clung by the score to the vines, chattering all at once as best they could, but they weren't talking about the old house because they didn't remember it. So many years had passed that the little boy had grown up to be a man. Yes. A fine man with his little wife had moved into the house of the garden. He stood there with her as she planted a meadow flower, which she thought was so enchanting. She planted it with her little hand and patted the earth with her fingers. Ow! What was that? She had jabbed herself. Something sharp was sticking out from the soft earth. It was... I just imagine, it was the tin soldier. The one who had disappeared up in the old man's parlor. It had tumbled and rolled between the timbers and rubble and finally had lain for many years in the earth. The young wife wiped off the soldier at first 
with a green leaf and them with her own fine handkerchief, which had such a lovely scent. For the tin soldier, it was like awakening from a trance. Let me see him, said the young man, laughing and shaking his head. Oh, it can't possibly be him. But he reminds me of a story about a tin soldier that I had when I was a little boy. And then he told his wife about the old house and the old man, and about the tin soldier that he had sent him over to him because he was so terribly lonely. He told the story in such detail that the young wife had tears in her eye over the old house and the old man. But it's possible it could be the same tin soldier, she said. I'm going to keep him and remember everything you told me, but you have to show me the old man's grave. Oh, I don't know where it is, he said. No one knows. All his friends were dead. There was no one to take care of it. I was just a little boy. How terribly lonely he must have been, she said. Terribly lonely, said the tin soldier. But how lovely it is not to be forgotten. Lovely, cried something close by. But nothing but the tin soldier noticed. There was a scrap of the pigskin wall covering that had lost all its gilding. It looked like wet earth, but it had something to say it did. Gilding wears thin, but never pigskin. Oh, though the tin soldier found that hard to believe. And that was the old house. I liked that story. I think it's very cute. I think there's something to be said for acknowledging and loving old things. There's a much to be appreciated about new things as well, but that's why we read old fairy tales. Because they're just as good as the good then as they were now. And there's something to be said about visiting your elders, too. It has to be sad the older you get, and the less people come visit you. But that's why it's important for the young people to always show appreciation for the people that came before. Because without them, we wouldn't be here. And wouldn't you want someone to visit you when you were alone and terribly lonely? I think I'd like that very much. If there's anyone out there that feels like that, know that I love you, and I'm thinking of you, and I hope you're doing well, and I hope you stay happy, healthy, and safe. All right. Bye, guys. I'll see you next week. And thank you so much for watching another story. It means the world to me. Bye!